Today what we're gonna go over is MetaMask, which is a Web3 enabled wallet. Then we're gonna talk about Ethereum naming service, service domains. And then we're going to look at some fine art that has been minted on the Ethereum blockchain. So first, we go to MetaMask. If you don't have a MetaMask wallet yet, you should get one. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to type in in your browser metamask.io. Avoid all misspellings. Download, install for Chrome, whatever you're using, go for it. Okay. So after that, you'll put in your, you'll create a 12 word seed, go through all the things you have to do create an Ethereum wallet. Trust me, it'll be well worth it. All right, so assuming that this video doesn't teach you how to use MetaMask or to create a MetaMask account, it's like any other Ethereum wallet. You can find it on the internet anywhere. Uh, make sure your name is correct. So now we have our MetaMask account open. I want to open it as a full web page, which I like to use. So then there's one main net and several different test nets that you can use. Uh, we're gonna be using Robston for this um, because the it's free to use. So if you don't have any Robston uh, test ether, you can look for some. faucet. Uh, this one seems to be working. You can copy your account here and paste it in. Check the last four digits. Just common practice. And then they can send you testnet ether. So I've already secured some testnet ether here. I have 1.76 ether to use for creating ENS. So this is the Ethereum naming service. Uh, it's basically like DNS, but it works specifically on Ethereum. So we can go through it again. I'm disconnected from this wallet. Web3 enabled digital wallets let you connect to sites, to websites. So um, again, we're on Robston. I'm gonna go ahead and con hit connect. It'll ask us to connect our wallet. And it'll show we're connected here. One domain connected to the site. On the main net, it will show that uh, sites you're connected to. So you could be connected to 20 different sites. So when you go to that site, you're automatically logged in as this wallet. Okay. I've already set a reserve, a reverse resolver here. This is a new feature on Ethereum naming service. What we're going to do though, is go up to my account since I've signed in. This, all you have to do is sign in on your MetaMask account and all this functionality is available to you. Um, and we'll discuss more here. Um, let's say you wanted to create a new, a new name uh, for your wallet. Let's do sending funds okay so it looks like we found sending funds so what we do is we're going to go ahead and click on it and it'll bring us to this screen so here we have the name we're trying to register the amount of time depending on the amount of letters Three letters is more expensive. 
four letters is less expensive, but there are also premium domains that sell at a higher price. Depending on how many years you want to register it, you'll go ahead and hit those. Let's say we want sending funds for five years. We will request to register. And this is going to take some time. The next thing we have to do is register this domain. It's going to cost a lot more than what it says here on the main net, but this is practice. This is why we use Robston because you can slam buttons and understand how all this works. And it really transacts quickly. So if you're waiting on the main net, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to take longer, but the overall benefit is quite high. There's a lot of benefit to using these technologies. So now sending funds .eth is uh, one of our addresses on our account. You can see it down here. We click on it. Here we go. So we have our registrant control registrant. We have our registrant controller. We've set it for five years. The resolver address is an address that is used to point uh, the money to this address that we have set down here. We own both the registrant and controller. That means we can edit where the sending funds.eth address points to. So we would add our own ETH address down here. All this information is in the ENS app, the Web3 app. So what we would do is hit this trash can button and put in our own Ethereum wallet address. Okay. Also, there's some multi coin addresses here. There's space for IPFS, which is interplanetary file system, which basically is immutable websites, kind of. Yes. Twitter, among other things, can all be added at the same time in these records. This record field, these record fields can all be added. Uh, information can be added to all of them. Okay. Okay. One go. IPFS, ETH, Twitter.com. Confirm. So it will call up. Do you want to make sure? Is this your? Are these your names? You're like yes. Okay. Confirm. So you can do this on the main net the same way you do it on Robston, but what we're showing you is that you can practice on Robston and then do it correctly on main net because it's going to cost you some money. Cool. So now we have set our registrant automatically by buying this token. This is an ERC721 token we just bought. We have the registrant controller, the, the, the money resolves to our address. And this is our Twitter and our website. Pretty nice website. Okay. Next, subdomains. If I own the registrant and controller token, I can create as many subdomains as I want. And they read just like an email, except instead of an at symbol, there's a dot. Want to create a new subdomain? It asks me, okay, confirm it. So the way subdomains read is from the left to the right. Each level 
is separated with a dot. So ETH is the top level. Sending funds, in this case, is the next level. And then Jeremiah is the level past that. So it reads left to right with dots instead of at symbols. Since we've created this subdomain, there is also a controller token for this subdomain. The registrant who order, like originally created this address owns the controller token and uh, can set the, the records. But if they choose not to do anything, then the owner of this subdomain can then set all this all these parameters. If the owner of sending funds.eth were to give back their controller token to the uh, origination contract, which means if they gave this back to the origin and kept uh, registering the token, they would not own the subdomains, nor would they be able to control them. And there's something that just was created uh, recently on the ENS site and it's re reverse resolver. But before we get into that, I want to talk about how you, how to use these. Since we've signed up for sending funds um, and we know now where it goes, it goes to this wallet, 212B. So what we're going to do is look at our MetaMask and see that we also have the same address at so 212B. We created this wall. We created this ENS, obviously. Um, to point, to make sure that this is correct, sometimes it doesn't come in correctly. What you'll need to do is edit the record to make sure that this domain points to you, to your address. Delete that one. Since you've bought this, go up, copy to clipboard and make sure you put in your hex address. That's right. You can look at the whole thing if you want. Um, FCCB212, it looks correct to me, okay? Go ahead and confirm. This is the same thing we did. We, we're just making sure that we have the correct uh, resolver address because we want to make sure that the money goes to us when someone types in our wallet address, which is now called sendingfunds.eth. So if someone wanted to send money to you using a Ethereum, an Ethereum wallet, if, you're, if you just bought sendingfunds.eth, you actually ask them, so this is interesting. It's saying ENS name not found on the current network. Try switching to Ethereum mainnet. Am I in the wrong address? There we go. So it just needed to update apparently. I did everything correctly, but this is these are the kind of things you run into. And I, I think it's important to show that this isn't always a smooth process. Everyone knows that. Uh, when they get into this after a while. Okay, so again, this will be your wallet address. So anytime someone wants to send you money, they'll say, what's your address? And you'll say, sendingfunds.eth. And that's all it will take to send money to you. That is it. This is the power of this. It's just one of the reasons that you should use this. Send money to them. I mean, we're using testnet. If we were using the main net and I had $300 of stable coins, I could send it to you on MetaMask right now. If you have one of these. Or a testnet, uh, I'm sorry, or a uh, subdomain. So if you have sending funds, what if you have, what if you want your own? You have this other, you have Jeremiah that's sending funds that ETH. That will be your name. That will be how you get money sent to you over this network. Okay. So currently 
this network has my reserve record set to myfullwallet.eth. So what this does is it allows you to have a name come up on your Web3 wallet when you go to a Web3 enabled website. This is really, really important as we go away from using the traditional login password paradigm. If you'll notice up here, it says myfullwallet.eth. That is a reserve record. That is what it is set to. That is what my Ethereum wallet is set to. So when I log in using this Ethereum wallet, this one, 212B, the reverse record is set to my full wallet. Let's set it to sending funds.eth. So this is pretty new stuff, but it translates an address into a name. And it allows the dApps that you're interacting with to show that name. Right now, you need to copy and paste the name to the reverse resolver. We want it to be send funds. So we just copied it and we're gonna paste it with control V and it comes up. We'll hit save. We'll notify MetaMask that it's okay, run the transaction. Now we have created a reverse record for our ETH address, which is right here, FCCB212B. We see it right here, FCCB212B. We are now going to create it to sending funds and see, now it's updated. So now we've set the reverse record. So now I want to discuss uh, two of my favorite uh, NFT artists right now in December 2020. Um, I came across MGXS uh, on super rare. Shit is dope. NFTs are essentially the same thing as ENS records in the sense that they're on the same ERC 721 token standard on Ethereum, which means there's only one. Now there is only one of this art piece, but it's disseminated throughout the internet. Only one person can own the token, but anyone can look at it, which is a huge shift from traditional art for the most part. Most art is sitting in someone's private collection. This is available on the web. Now you should look up this artist. I encourage you to read more about them. I really, really enjoy animation, uh, being an animator myself. So bask in its immense glory. Okay, good stuff. Uh, the next piece is called uh, Sovereignty. And it's a idea around Bitcoin um, and uh, dreams. So this artist um, is making work on a website called async and it has layers that update. So this art is updatable. In this particular piece, I recommend you go to async.art and take a look at this and read about it. Um, this artist is using Bitcoin as an incentive to um, hopefully put our next pi space pioneers into space, right? Um, we will notice here that they are, that this artist is using their .eth name already. And um, I'm not gonna tell you what the, the this, pre this piece sold for a lot. Uh, in, in traditional art terms, it didn't sell for a lot, but in NFT, one of a kind, um, interactive work, it sold for a lot. Um, definitely they're already using their .eth. Um, it's going to be something we're going to be using a lot in the future. So thank you.